and a voice that I think needs to be heard. Well spoken, well thought out, and we wanted to welcome him to uh, the Mercury family now. David Sheriff, how are you? Good, Glenn. How are you doing? First of all, uh, thank you for this opportunity. When I uh, first came up, I said, wow. You know, uh, I've had a lot to say recently over the last, you know, um, four, five, six, seven, eight years. But I never had my own platform to do it. So it was always a situation where I was, uh, you know, had to be led by somebody else's platform and where they wanted to take a discussion. And uh, I am so thrilled to be a part of the Blaze Network, a brand that you have built, thank you. that you have grown, that you've nurtured. And I just simply want to add value to what you started and participate in this larger conversation about America. You mentioned that it's not the country that I recognize anymore either. Um, but I think that it's important to provide pushback and a counter message to this modern liberalism that's in full throttle. And that's what I hope to do. Well, David, first of all, you're you're going to add value. I've heard some of the test broadcasts that you have done, and uh, they're remarkable. My guy who used to be the head uh, of CBS radio and uh, and Clear Channel radio, uh, a truly remarkable man who's working with you on my behalf. He said that he believes you're one of the biggest talents he's ever heard. Uh, and, and that's after only the first show. Um, you're a natural at this. But more importantly, we're bringing you on, David, because you can speak with authority. And, uh, you know, black lives matter, but white lives matter, too. Young lives matter, old lives matter, blue lives matter. All life matters. And we're getting into a place, David, that I don't think this country has seen since the 1960s. And we're headed for real trouble with policing, with the militarization, with the disenfranchisement of the police, with the pitting of the police against the traditional supporters of the police. Our cities are going to be in real trouble because I believe there's a... There's a real effort underfoot through people like the Nation of Islam and uh, and Al Sharpton and uh, some of the friends of the president and the Black Panthers to literally set our cities on fire. So we need a reasonable voice that can tell us and speak from a position of authority on what to do. What do our policemen even do? That's kind of interesting. Um, as you know, many of your listeners may not have 37 years of urban law enforcement experience. All my education, my bachelor's degree is in criminal justice management. My master's degree is in security studies, um, um, homeland security related for the United States Naval Academy postgraduate school. Uh, it's been my life. It really has. I bleed blue. I tell people, if you cut me open, you're not going to find red. I bleed blue. But, Glenn, I, I sat up and watched after the days of Ferguson where this proud profession that I've been a part of. Uh, just came under attack, and I predicted, and not because I'm in the prediction business, but I knew I know cops, I know this profession, I know the importance cops matter, I know the importance that uh, law enforcement public safety has, especially in your urban centers where you have densely populated areas, you don't have all the social controls um, necessary for these things to work themselves out, and so you have to have an intermediary, and, and more times than not, unfortunately, especially in the American ghetto, that intermediary is the American police officer, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, who else is going down into these areas when we, you know, our police come under attack and it's, you know, the white cop shoots the unarmed black guy and, I, and, and our cops are racist. You know, this is, these are some of the smears that we hear. And I go, wait a minute, who else is going down there? I don't see the politician down there. I don't see the loudmouth um, uh, demagogue like Al Sharpton down there. I see an American police officer who puts his or her life on the line, is willing to sacrifice their life if it means that in service to who? In the American ghetto, other black people. And so to hear them malign like this uh, really bothered me. So I decided to step up and start to fight back, like I said, uh, a counter message defending this proposition. Look, I've said, and I know this, and everybody knows, but I'll say it anyway. Are cops perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Is the Ameri is the uh, our police departments perfect? Not even close. However, these are these communities we're talking about, this is the finest that they have. And they go down there with the best of intentions to do right, to do it within the rules. And, yeah, every time, every once in a while, something goes horribly wrong. But then to come down and throw all the maladies and the pathologies of the urban ghetto on the back of the American police officer and say, you go down there and do something about it, keep them uh, from killing each other, raping, robbing, and pillaging. And, oh, by the way, if something goes horribly wrong, you know, like it did in Ferguson, like it did in New York, like it did in South Carolina, in other areas, including here in Milwaukee County, all of a sudden it's, oh, the cops are the bad guys now. Let's go attack the cops. Glenn, we expect that 
because we've seen that before from cop haters. Um, you know, all my 37 years, I know there are people out there that just don't like the police. We expect that from that cabal. What we did not expect this time around was to see it from an unlikely source, and that unlikely source is the political class, who we, we know we need their backing, not only for resources, but at times when, yeah, maybe we made a mistake, or even if we didn't make a mistake, like in the case of Ferguson, there was no mistake made. We don't expect the political class to turn us up, upside down and, 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 and to attack us and when us criminally indicted, so on and so forth. That's what's different this time around. Sheriff, we're talking to David Clark. He's the uh, sheriff in Milwaukee County. And if the name sounds familiar and you can't quite place it, it's because he was the guy who was featured on radio ads in Milwaukee saying citizens should, should not rely on police for protection. They should arm themselves and they should be there, the first responders. And we have talked to him several times. He is fearless, speaks his mind. Uh, and quite honestly, I think that's what we need. David, as we're watching this, I think the police are being set up, myself. Um, we are now starting to see that they're not patrolling because they're not going to get the backup they deserve. You're also seeing the decay because of the militarization. You're seeing people like me who I'm a big supporter of the police, but I'm gravely concerned about the militarization of our police because of what this administration has stated its goals. We have now Al Sharpton, who is one of the czars with this administration, coming out and saying the Justice Department needs to take over local policing. When the president says he wants to cut back on the militarization, what he's saying is he wants to just not sell them tanks. But in that executive order, and I don't know if you've read it, in that executive order, it talks about the Pentagon and the Justice Department partnering with the local police all the way down to things like uniforms and what their uniforms will look like. It's a very frightening thing. How can you help bridge the gap on making sure that the cops know that the average citizen still has respect for them? But we are concerned about some of the things that they're now being required to do and some of the things this administration, we're trying to speak out and warn and say, look, you're going to be left alone because you're being set up. Do you believe well, that? And how would you respond? Well, first of all, let's unpack that a little bit because there's a lot there. And, and, and your concern, I share that concern. I'm not at war with my community here in Milwaukee County. I don't think any agency is. I have said from the beginning that the 1033 program needs better oversight. There is no doubt about that. But I don't think that uh, the president should have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. He said some of this equipment belongs in a battlefield. And my first thought was, has he been down in the American ghetto recently? I know he lives life in a bubble. But some of these, when you hear, you know, 15 dead, 37 shot in Baltimore, in a weekend, on a Memorial Day weekend, when you hear 40 people shot in a month, when you go to Chicago and you look at it in one weekend, Glenn, 15 dead, 37 injured, 40 injured, that sounds like a battlefield. And that doesn't mean that we should do overkill in terms of some of the surplus uh, equipment. I think it needs oversight. I think that you should have to, each agency should have to make a stronger case as to why they want this, this equipment. Some of this equipment is missing, it's not even accounted for. So I think it needs more oversight. However, I think the worst thing that we can do in the United States is federalize local policing. Founding fathers didn't want a federal police force. As far as I'm concerned, local policing is a state's rights issue. Each state is responsible for the uh, so securing the uh, personal safety of their citizens in that city. Uh, there, there's a, a role in the, uh, for the federal government in this, but it's not running these agencies. It is not taking these agencies over. It's not telling these agencies on a one-size-fits-all training them, setting up policies and standards. And that's kind of what this, this whole uh, 21st century task force that the president hastily uh, threw together uh, is really trying to accomplish. Okay, a one-size-fits-all. Uh, every community is different. Every community citizens, and I think it's what you're, you're, you're speaking to, Glenn, every community citizens have different wants, needs, and standards, what they'll put up with, what they won't. And so I think it needs to be left to the locals. I think it's a slap in the face of the state governments because if there's, if, there's a, if there's a problem in Ferguson with what was going on, and, and there was, okay, if there's a problem in one of these other cities as to what's going on, you have a state attorney general, you have other oversight. Each city has their own oversight board of civilians, and if they're not doing their job, well, then the state attorney general, I believe, should step in and maybe be that intermediary, not the United States attorney general, 
and especially not the president of the United States. We're talking to Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, who is uh, joining us now on Blaze Radio Saturdays. It'll be posted at noon Eastern at theblaze.com slash radio. A very outspoken guy, a guy who um, has been with us uh, several times. And I want to take a quick break and then come back and just ask you one question. You're there in Milwaukee. I'd love to hear your impression of Scott Walker radio uh and it will air on uh, saturdays or it'll be posted on saturdays so you can hear him he is fearless he's the guy that michael bloomberg threw money hand over fist during his last campaign and he still won huge he is a plain spoken guy who can speak with authority and tell you what is really going on from the uh from the police perspective and we're proud to have him a part of blaze radio now because we are huge supporters of the police departments, and they are coming under fire big time. Tell me about Scott Walker, um, because we haven't we haven't quite made up our mind on him, David. From a distance, he seems to be good, but then there are times that you're like, okay, wait a minute, he's just kind of flip flopped here. Is that who he is? Can you give us any insight on him? Uh, well, first of all, you know, I, I want to thank you again for the uh, the complimentary comments, and I hope uh, that people do. Tune in and uh, on, on the Saturday podcast. Give me a chance. I think they'll like it. As you know, I, I, I give people information unvarnished and, and no sugar coating. Yeah. Uh, as it relates to Scott Walker, full disclosure. First of all, I'm a friend of Scott Walker. Uh, we became friends because we both worked in Milwaukee County government. I'm the Milwaukee County Sheriff. Came in the same year that he did as county executive, so we worked closely together. He's a strong supporter of law enforcement. Also, always made sure that we were properly funded. Uh, but what I learned about Scott Walker is um, he listens to people. He would come to me and say, Sheriff, you know, I got this uh, idea here or some funding situation. I want to know how this affects public safety. And I would tell him that he'd say, hey, thanks. I don't know that I want to do that. He's very decisive, but he listens to his advisors. You can bet that he will listen to his military commanders. You can bet that he'll listen to his economic advisors, but he will make the decision. He will not vacillate. But the one thing I'm looking for, and I'm telling people now, and that's, you know, I, I do have a bias about Scott Walker, but I say vet everybody, okay? They're all going to do what you just mentioned. And every once in a while, you, you get a can, you say, hey, this guy's looking good, this woman's looking good, and then all of a sudden, boom, oh, geez, you know, flip-flop there, I'm not sure now. That's what this process is supposed to do is is weed all of that out. So I'm telling people, and I'll talk about this on, on uh, uh, some of my shows uh, uh, leading up into the 2016 election, but vet them all. They all have weaknesses. There is no perfect candidate. What I'm looking for, though, is the person who's going to bring this country back to its founding principles. That's what we need right now, leadership in that area. And I think that this process will allow us to uh, yeah, identify that individual. I, I like Carly Fiorina. I like Michael Rubio. He's got his, his issues. Uh, I like Ted Cruz. I like, I'm not going to say I like all of them. I'm not a big fan of, uh, of Rand Paul because he did some things that, kind of insulted me in meeting with Al Sharpton. Uh, okay, hang on. David, I'm, I'm, I'm out of time, but I, I'm hoping that you'll give that story on one of your first uh, podcasts. Thank you very much. Sheriff David Clark, new to the Blaze Radio.